Okay, welcome to the last section of the first chapter of this course. It is 1.8, an introduction to equations. We're going to be using equations a lot this year. But before we do so, I just want to remind you to make sure you did the 1.7 lesson check. Now, getting started, let's define an equation. An equation is a mathematical sentence that uses an equal sign. An example of this would be 1 plus 2 equals 3, going back to kindergarten. Or a slightly more challenging problem, 5x minus 1x equals 4x. So those are two examples you can write down in the space in your notes. There are several different types of equations. The first one is called a true equation. And this happens when the expressions on the, the si each side of the equal sign are equal to each other. So it's true. An example of this would be 2 equals 2. Or 1 plus 3 equals 3 plus 1. Or here's another one. 4 plus 2 equals 3 plus 3. Both sides are equal to 6. Now, if it's not true, guess what it is? False. So, you have a false equation when the sides of the equals are not equal to each other. The expressions on either side are not equal to each other. Example of this would be 1 equals 2. That's not true. Another example of this would be 1 plus 3 equals 10 minus 2. We have 4 on the left and 8 on the right, so that's not equal to each other. Um, there's another vocab word that we want to know. It's called open sentence. So we have an open sentence if the equation that we're dealing with involves one or more variables. Remember, a variable is just a letter. So write that down if you forgot. An example of this would be x plus 1 equals 4. As you can see, the variable x is involved. Now let's classify the equations. In part A, we have 24 plus 18 equals 20 plus 22. Well, how can we figure out if it's true or false? How about we just add them? When you add the left, you get 42. And when you add the right, you get 42. What do you think about that? True or false? It is true. You must have the middle line there to prove that it's true. Otherwise, you don't know. Part B, 7 times 8 equals 54. What is 7 times 8? 56. Does 56 equal 54? No. So this is a false equation. And the last one. It involves a variable. So what kind of equation is that? That's an open sentence. You can write the word open. And the reason why, because there is a variable. All right. Now, if we're talking about equations, it would be important for us to talk about solutions of equations. So a solution of an equation is a value of the variable that makes the equation true. So the number that you plug in and the equation is made true because of that number. So a solution of an equation is a value of the variable that makes the equation true. Makes the equation true. Okay, so in example two, we have x equals six. Is that a solution of the equation 32 equals 2x plus 12? How do we figure that out? Well, we take the 6 and we plug it in for the x right there. So we have 32 equals, question mark, not sure, 2 times 6 plus 12. What's 2 times 6? Oh, that's 12. 12 plus 12 equals 32, maybe. What's 12 plus 12? 24. Does 24 equal 32? No, not at all. So we're going to write no x equals 6 is not a solution, and we are done with that.
Example three. We have an art student wanting to make a model of the Mayan Great Ball Court in Chichen Itza, Mexico. Probably butchered that name, but there you go. Um, the length of the court is 2.4 times its width. That's something important. Let's underline that or highlight it. Length of the court is 2.4 times its width. The length of the student model is 54 inches. That's also important. Length is 54 inches. What should the width of the model be? Well, first of all, we're looking for width. So we have to define our variable. Let w equal width. Based on that first sentence that we underlined or highlighted, let's write that down. The length is 2.4 times the width. Okay, write that down. And now let's replace that. The length is how long? 54. Is means equals. 2.4 comes down times what operation is that? Multiplication. And width is w. So there's our equation right there. It required us to use an equation. And now we have four answer options. What do you think we should do with them? Let's plug them in and see which one works. 54 equals question mark 2.4 times 2.4. When you multiply, you get 5.76. That does not equal 54, so that's not the answer. Let's try the next one. 54 equals question mark 2.4 times 11.25. And when you multiply that, you get 27. That is not 54, so that doesn't work. Let's plug in 22.5 now. 22.4 times 22.5. And that equals 54. Awesome. So circle C and write down 22.5 is equal to the width. And that's our answer. I think you'll like this next example. It's not too bad. It says we need to use mental math to find the solutions. So in part A, this is what we're thinking to ourselves. What number plus 8 equals 12? Well, I think it's 4. X equals 4. So let's check real quick. And the way that you check is you just plug in the 4. 4 plus 8 equals 12. Yes, we're done with that. Now, part B, A divided by 8 equals 9. The question is, what number divided by 8 equals 9? Using our math facts, X, or rather A, equals 72. Let's check real quick. 72 divided by 8 equals 9. Yes. And we are done with that one. And one of the last examples, we're learning how to use a table. So if we were to use this equation, 5n plus 8 equals 48, we need to figure out some values to test for n. If we plugged in 1, we would get 13. If we plugged in 10, we would get 58. Those are too small and too big. So let's try numbers in the middle of 1 and 10. How about let's try 5, 6, 7, 8. And what we're going to do is plug in those numbers for the n. 5 times 5 plus 8. That equals 33. 5 times 6 plus 8. That equals 38. 5 times 7 plus 8 equals 43. And 5 times 8 plus 8 equals 48. And that's exactly what we were looking for. So the value that made the equation equal to 48 is 8. So write that down. And the last example. 
we have the equation negative 9x minus 5 equals 28. And it says, what is an estimate of the solution? This means we're not going to get an exact value for our answer. We're going to have to estimate. So now, if we plugged in 0, we would get a negative number. And if you plugged in 1, you'd also get a negative number. Well, take a look. We're trying to get positive 28, so that means we don't want to use 0, 1, or any positive number to plug in. Let's try some negatives, such as negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So we're going to plug those in for the x right here. So negative 9 times negative 1 minus 5. That is equal to 4. The reason why this works is because we're plugging in a negative, so we have a double negative, that means that we're getting a positive. And that equals 13. Negative 9 times negative 3 minus 5. That is equal to 22. And the last one, negative 9 times negative 4 equals minus 5 equals 31. Well, I don't see 28 anywhere, but do you see two numbers that 28 would be between? These two numbers right here, 28 would be between those two numbers. So make sure you write that down. And the x values that match up with those two numbers are negative 3 and negative 4. So our solution is between negative 3. And that's it. So you can hold off for the lesson check for 1.8 until we do the problems together during class, and soon we will be reviewing the entire chapter and getting ready for our chapter one test.